Hey, what's up Reefers? It looks like I started the video maybe two minutes too late because Mochi just ate a yellow tail blue damsel. Uh, the blue damsel had been in the tank for about an hour or two along with uh, the other guy, the, that's the other guy. Uh, both of them had been in the tank for about an hour or two and they were surviving until Mochi got hungry enough that he was he was up here. He decided to like track all the way here to the edge uh, to catch a damsel. And of course, we got the original yellowtail blue damsel still alive and well. He uh, regularly hangs out with Mochi now. I don't I don't I don't even know what's going on. But we may have a name for him. I've been calling him original yellowtail blue damsel. It's kind of long. And my friend Jim recommended the name Mustang because he was a uh, Air Force pilot and uh, I guess he knows planes pretty well. So there's this fighter plane that has a yellow tail. So he sent me the picture, I'm like, you know what? That sounds pretty good. But that, I'm also kind of afraid of naming this little guy because uh, one day if he actually got eaten or something happened to him, oh my goodness. Uh, because now if I give him a name, he'll actually be a pet. So we'll see. But look at Mochi, look at the stomach. Well, in terms of like feeding live fish, I know that this is kind of controversial. Um, for me, I don't feel good about it, but at the same time, because Mochi is not taking uh, frozen food yet. Uh, so I was like, okay, you know what? I mean, this is uh, the natural diet. So since I have him in this unnatural environment, I feel like it's up to me to provide food. However, I may have a solution now. So a little bit earlier, uh, a little bit earlier this week, I went to Fantastic and Frederick, uh, which is, <laughs> as you can see, rapidly becoming uh, one of the local fish stores that I go to a lot. Flashback. So I also picked up two yellowtail blue damsel for Mochi, and the great news is that I talked to the owner, Paul, right? I asked if he has any uh, shipping loss, uh, typically, and if so, is he willing to kind of like just keep the bodies in the freezer for me um, so I can buy it off him to feed Mochi? And he was super nice. He's like, no, I'll just give it to you because he get reimbursed. But uh, I still want to pay him something because I'm taking up his freezer room. So we'll work something out. But maybe with that, I don't have to buy as many live fish because I do feel kind of bad. End of flashback. I know that Mochi, he takes a dead shrimp. I've tried to go shrimp. Some of the go shrimp pass away. I feed him and he still eats. So I feel like it, it should probably be the same with fish as well. As long as fish looks like an actual fish, like the full body, right? then he may take it. So I'm gonna try it out. If that works out, that's beautiful because like now the, the fish that pass away do not go to waste and I don't have to uh, uh, get like live fish and feed them live. I mean like regardless of how natural the diet is, I still do not feel good about feeding live food. So that is that. All right, so in terms of the tank, you see that <laughs> quite a few things are missing. So number one, the uh, Monipori cap that I, I had here before, I think it's the Reef Tech one uh, from Cops. It completely bleached out. It's pretty obvious that it's, it's that, so I removed it. And the Frog Spawn, obviously I gave it away to uh, DC Reefer's school tank a while back. Now on the back, there was a really nice Bird's Nest SPS, but recently it was not doing well. I think it's because of the uh, alkalinity swing in this tank. I was trying to dose elk and I fudged it up. It shot all the way up to like 14 or 15 uh, and things were not doing too hot. I think that's when I lost the Monty Cap. Uh, so tip, the tip got burned out. In fact, let me just show you. And here's a sneak peek on what's to come. Uh, but check this out. You see how the tip have some algaes? It's actually a lot better already in this tank. It's been in this tank for about a week. So I moved it from that tank to here. I need to move this a little bit towards the center. I was trying to put it off center so the light's not as intense. So I moved it to center so it's more in the flow. Uh, hopefully that it'll heal up and I may move it back or I may keep it here. I'm not sure yet. But so far it's doing well. Uh, but in that tank, the tip was starting to kind of die off. So I was like, uh oh, all right, let's, let's move it to a more stable tank, a more stable environment. But we'll talk about this tank uh, in a video or two. I have a lot of update on that tank, by the way. So for this tank, uh, so that's the SPS situation. I moved it. I'm still debating whether I want to start dosing this tank and then I can introduce more SPS. But due to the limited amount of space I can plant SPS, I'm not sure if it's worth the effort. Uh, so we will see. But the next big thing is actually the MP10. So as you can, as you, as you guys remember, I used to have a lot of detritus down here, even, even though I kind of vacuum it before I shoot, but there's still a lot of detritus. But I bought this MP10 from a band of uh, uh, Supreme Reef. 
great guy, great store, lots of high-end stuff. But yes, he has some equipment for sale. So one of these is the um, MP10 Quiet Drive with the wireless capability. Well, it's wire wireless enabled. Uh, so I bought that. I bought the uh, foam pre-filter because I'm really afraid of Mochi kind of like going down there and get sucked against the filter. Uh, but that was before I know how strong it could actually swim. Sorry for the interruption. So Mochi has fallen, and I'm not sure if he can get back up with the new MP10 installed. Uh, so I'm going to give him a hand, literally. Let's see. No, 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 wrong way, wrong way. There you go. Oh man, strong. Okay, it's back at the top where he's, he's more familiar with the area. It's cool because I can actually feel the jet power pushing against my hand behind the fins. Kind of neat. But yeah, I wasn't sure if he could make it back up here with the MP10. But yo, he has grown. Look at that. Look at the size of Mochi compared to uh, Mustang. Yep, he's like, peace. I don't want to be on camera anymore. That was embarrassing. Yeah. All right, back to your regular programming. So I have the MP10 down here. At first I was afraid that it would be too much flow, but I was able to dial it all the way down to just one. And as you can see right now, it's all the way up to what, six? So it was at level one. I was like, okay, that's not bad. And then I slowly crank it up. And then I find myself cranking it up higher and higher and higher until I'm like almost half power. So the good thing is that at the bottom, there's almost no detritus left except for the little slat right there. I still need to kind of seal the gap. But besides that, it's really clean. And added bonus is that now that I got flow underneath it, the GSP seems to be spreading. Uh, especially that piece right there is already attached to the bottom. Before it was really static. It was not spreading at all. It was just like that. It, it'll open, but just zero flow. It's not even moving. But as soon as I added this flow, it's been about two weeks, I would say. It, it's pretty obvious that it started growing. So I think uh, number one, light is obviously important. Number two, uh, slightly dirty water. And number three, water flow is actually really important if you want your GSP to spread. And this big chunk of GSP, if you look at the last video, I actually ripped that off from here. I actually have the, uh, I, I showed the process on my Instagram at uh, Inappropriate Reefer. I'm actually really active on Instagram now because like it's so easy to make updates. So be sure to follow me on Instagram and say hi. Uh, but there was one big piece right here. I just kind of peeled it off and cut it and I mounted it to the bottom. Since we're on the topic of GSP, check out these GSP right here. So it's growing really well. It, it has it has unfortunately made landfall right there. I'm, you see at the bottom right there, it's kind of crawling onto the main rock. So at this point, I'm not sure if I could stop it anymore. I may just let it grow. We will see. And I do like the fact that it's making its way across the sand trap, um, and it looks like kind of spreading downwards. I really wanted to kind of like cover this entire wall as well. That would be beautiful. But I'm also kind of nervous about it reaching rock right there as well because that part is actually really close to the coral versus if it crawl up there it's in the shade it's not going to grow fast and there's no corals over there let's slide over here to look at the gsp situation also spreading right there uh this already made rock fall i think it's gonna just a matter of time before it crawled up um yeah i mean some some of you guys recommend this sand but I'm trying to, the flow is pretty strong here. I feel like the sand is going to get blown everywhere. So I'm like, I don't know. And I really like the uh, clean look, at least for now. So, I don't know. I feel like for the GSP to really take over the rock, it may be another half a year or a year. Mm, we'll see. I mean, when that time comes, I may be able to do something a little bit more drastic. Maybe even ripping out the rock and just kind of like chipping things off. Um, the rock is not easily removable since I epoxy them down, but I think like if I just kind of yank it, it will come off. So that is an option. It just, maybe just hassle for a day or so. So at the moment I'm leaning toward just like, you know what, just forget it, too much little maintenance, just let it grow. Once I get to a certain point where it's kind of getting too crazy, then I just pull things out. Uh, we'll see. And that's the advantage of having a nano, right? Everything is so easy, like all compartmentized and easy to pull out. 
So you notice a, I added a lot of snails. Before there was almost no snails left. So I added some snails here uh, because you see the film algae right there. It was, like, it just, it was actually getting really bad. I think about like every three days or so, the glass or the acrylic would be covered by film, green film algae, and I have to uh, use one of those uh, foam pads to kind of polish it though, just wipe it off. So I went to Fantastic, got the super, super cheap snails. I think the Astria snail is like 60 cents. Margarita is like 70 cents. The Mexican Turbo, uh, these guys are a little bit smaller, but usually a lot larger, it's like $2. Uh, so I, I grab a bunch of them and uh, I'm trying to find a good balance once I clean these up. And once I see that they're kind of running out of food, then I might start shuttling some of these guys over to the 45 gallon tank. Now that also leads me to the next topic I want to talk about uh, because I noticed that there is a nutrient issue. I got this covered by film algae like this, all right, on the entire side. I say every like three or four days. So the skimmer is not that effective. It's not efficient at all. I mean, it works, but it could do a better job, I feel like. So I have the high door nano skim. It's a decent skimmer, but uh, I don't think it's keeping up with the nutrients of this tank, especially since I got the uh, Fathead Andro, so I've been feeding feeding it quite a bit as well. Um, and I've been feeding, I was gonna show you guys. I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. I was feeding this. Funnelrine, when, whenever I'm not feeding uh, frozen food and around the tank, I just kind of like do a pinch and I just stick it in there. Here, let me just show you guys. Single-handed. <sighs> One-handed operation. Please don't drop this. Okay. All right. Got it. Just a tiny bit. Well, right now I just got a tiny bit. Usually I feed a little bit more. And I just kind of go to see how the polyp immediately grabbed it. Normally I grab more than that. That was a really, <laughs> really small pinch. But I'll stick my finger along the tentacle. The tentacle tentacles are really aggressive. They just grab. The, pal uh, the, the pellets, however it could, and just hold on to it. And anything that I missed, the fish seems to take it, but even that seems to be too much nutrient for the system, especially with mochi eating uh, eating more now, eating more fish or eating more ghost shrimp. So uh, the skimmer is not keeping up. So with that in mind, I got this. So I got this from a fellow WAMAS member for free, actually, thank you so much. I really, I really like the fact that reefers are helping each other out. Uh, so uh, I picked this up a while back with the intention of using it for this tank, but just never gotten around to it and I want to give the skimmer a chance. Uh, but since the skimmer is not really keeping up and I feel like this actually, this fits. I was doing some measurements. This seems to fit. So I'm going to try this out. Uh, try to put some media in here. And the media I'm going to use first is this guy right here. Uh, so I won this in one of the Instagram contests. I believe it's from uh, Amaya Coral. Thank you so much. It's an uh, Aquamax. And seems to be all in one filter media. I've never heard much about this. I mean, it's a good brand, but I've never heard much of this product. And it comes with a filter sock. Uh, not filter sock, a media sock. So I uh, plan to stick it in here. And then we'll give this a go. And obviously I'll use my favorite filter pads. Yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of uh, mechanical filtration because I see immediate result, right? I see the pad turn brown, I pull it, I'm like, okay, I'm doing something. And good thing that I have this here, I was gonna tell you guys something too, sad news. I think some of these zoas, the rastas, have zoa pox. This is my first encounter with zoa pox. Uh, and that, that tiny colony is supposed to be like four polyps, right? That actually what prompted me. I looked at it, I was like, wait, what are those white dots? So I did some research online. Those are, seems to be zoopox. Good thing is that nothing else seems to be affected. It's just that colony and that right there. Uh, I do see some white spots. So the recommendation online is to use Furin 2. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. So I grabbed this. This is about like eight or nine dollars. Um, yeah, it looks like it treats a bacteria infection. So I'm gonna give this a go. I'm gonna dip these guys in the foreign two and see how it goes. And this is my first encounter with uh, Zoa Pox. Kind of exciting, actually. Something different. So we'll see. And another really cool thing is that, sorry, I'm, I got like ADHD. I'm jumping around. You see in the back those little white dots. So those are keyhole limpets. Uh, somehow they made it across from my 45 gallon to this tank, uh, probably through like frag or frag plug or something like that. 
but they're starting to pop up left and right in this tank, which is a great thing. These are great herbivores. Um, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six just kind of lined up here, and we got some over here as well. So that's good news. And the I haven't talked about this little guy in a long time, but you see that there's like a oyster or scallop, probably oyster right there that came up with hitchhike from Vietnam. So those are Vietnam zoas. So we got one of those guys. And the Phetanandro, as always, is doing beautifully. So this started out as two and a half heads from Ben, uh, Supreme Reef. Again, uh, I have a pretty good relationship with all these local fish store uh, vendors. I've been uh, buying from them for a while. So I got that from Ben, uh, two and a half heads, beautiful, beautiful piece. And after almost a year, finally, we're, we're seeing a, a small colony right there. Pretty happy. And that piece right here, that came from um, Tropical Lagoon in Silver Spring. And the funny thing is that it used to be a more intense red. It's called Firecracker Fethead Dendril. And it was a little bit more red, but after it's been about, what, five months? It's pretty much looking the same as the one I got from Supreme Reef. So too bad I could not keep its color. And over here, of course, we got the uh, Kryptonite Candy Cane, one of my favorite coral. Beautiful, beautiful color. Highlighter green color. And it was, uh, it was probably one third the size when it went to this tank. But with, uh, I have not touched it ever since. And that really helped it recover. It was, it was hurting in the 45 gallon. That's why I moved it here. Um, but af especially after I removed the frog spine, nothing is stinging it anymore. It just kind of took off. Oh, another thing I'm really happy about not Mochi's fat stomach, but the Monty Parker cap. I was worried that it's gonna die with the elk swing, uh, especially since the Reef Tech one bleached out and the uh, bird nest kind of just dying. <laughs> but this guy seems to be doing well and the color has really intensified. Um, so this seems to be here to stay. And I want to plant something over there too, some kind of plating Monty. Either a green one, a purple one, or maybe just more orange one, I don't know. Or maybe I can plant an orange one here and a green one here. Um, yeah, Monty, Monty cap seems to be hardy enough for this tank's pretty shaky condition at the moment. So I'll probably give that a go. Uh, but, but a more sensitive SPS like bird's nest, uh, and of course like acro and stuff. I'm not even trying acro there. Uh, those will have to wait. So just Monty in this tank for now and different color zoas because man there's a lot of red here or brown oh also here <clears throat> this is the um, rainbow or orange double twin anemone that i also got from ben uh, and his tank is like bright 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 orange it was still a it was still holding up orange when it first got into uh my 45 but over time it's dulled out under my light uh but i'm hoping that one day it will regain its color uh, right now it's not that impressive but as you can see in my last video, I kind of butchered it when I was trying to frag it. It was torn in half, so half of it went to Sally, half stayed here. But it has almost made a full recovery. The tentacle on the left side is still kind of small, it's still recovering. But uh, it's definitely putting it back. And the mouth is front and center, it's already eating. I was feeding it. Yeah. All right, so that is pretty much it. Just want to give you guys a uh, pretty quick update. Well, long ass update, but a pretty quick update on the drop off tank. The next two or three video is going to be amazing. You don't want to miss it. First, I'm going to talk about <clears throat> the new T5. This is the Aquatic Life T5 hybrid fixture. I got the Radeon. I actually tried it with the Focus One first. Things did not work out, and I will explain why in that video. And I'm going to talk to you about my impression with the T5. And then next, we're going to talk about Sally's tank. It has been requested multiple times. Everybody want to see an update on Sally's tank, but she is pretty camera shy and she felt like her tank was not quite there yet. But I guess recently things has gotten a little better and I have seen her tank and her tank is looking pretty nice. So I'll be getting some footage of that really soon. So look forward to the follow following videos. And of course, I still have um, all those amazing coral reef uh, videos from Philippine that I need to edit and pump out. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this update and I hope you guys are having a great time. Uh, enjoy the long weekend. And if you are a veteran, thank you for your service. Seriously, we'll not be here not if it's not for you guys. All right, so I guess I'll see you guys next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. But I have a feeling that I'm gonna see you a lot sooner than that. So talk to you guys later. Yeah.